Gabrielle de Wilde of BioBase Europe Pilot Plant, we turn grams into tons. That means we scale up bio-based uh, products and processes. Um, we're a pilot plant, so plant in the sense of a factory, not a plant that grows. Uh, and pilot means we're the first ones to produce materials at relatively large scale. Um, BioBase Europe Pilot Plant is a company. It's a not-for-profit SME, uh, founded in 2008. Um, we have a lot of equipment that's really um, very important to us, to our customers. Um, and of course, equipment is very expensive. So we gathered a lot of money through uh, investment funds, um, in total approximately 40 million euro. And all this money comes from Europe, Flanders and the Netherlands. Uh, so all public partners, let's say, um, and that's very important to us because it allows us to remain fully independent. We don't have any industrial shareholders, uh, but of course we don't get any recurring funding, so we have to be economically viable with the projects we perform for customers. We're operational since 2010, so we've grown to 88 employees in the meantime. Um, and we've, yeah, um, gathered a lot of experience uh, in this time. We've also implemented um, certifications, ISO 9001, FSC 22000, which allows us to produce food grade products. <clears throat> so technical grade as well as food grade products. So not pharmaceutical products, That's, we don't do that. Um, we're located in a North Sea port in Ghent. Um, is there a pointer? So this is our facility. Um, I'll explain to you what our neighbors do uh, in the next slides. Uh, and I'll also, also show you that uh, this free space, which is called Kluizendok, um, is there. And uh, we collaborate quite regularly with the people of the North Sea port to attract, to try to attract investors um, to build their factories here. Um, of course, it's very interesting for the port that we are there. Um, to scale up these potential new investments um, so that in the future these plants can grow, these industrial scale plants can grow in this region. Okay, so our neighbors. Um, we're located right next to a biorefinery cluster called Rodenhuizen Dock. Um, why, why do I tell you this? Um, all these companies uh, collaborate to produce at a very large scale first generation biofuels, so biodiesel, bioethanol, uh, CO2 from the bioethanol plant, uh, electricity from wood pellets. Um, and all these companies uh, collaborate, uh, they share infrastructure, they share utilities, uh, they share the storage capacity of oil tanking and euro silo, um, which allowed them to be profitable as opposed to many other smaller scale initiatives um, that were erected in the past that went bankrupt in the meantime. All these companies are member of the public-private partnership Flanders Biobased Valley, of which we are also member. Uh, so this is really an illustration of the biobased economy um, in, at an industrial scale. But of course, this is first generation, meaning um, that uh, edible biomass feedstocks are used to produce fuels. So that's maybe not the future. Um, so that's where the BioBase Europe pilot plant comes in. Uh, what we really want to do is to enable the transition from a fossil towards a sustainable biobased and circular economy. <clears throat> so we do that through three types of services that we provide to our customers and partners. And that's process development, process scale-up, and custom manufacturing. Always of bio-based um, products and, and processes. Well, I say always, but it's not really the case. We have some examples of circular feedstocks and not bio-based feedstocks. And that's uh, typically CO2 um, and CO, which are not always bio-based. Um, yeah, you see a picture here of our largest uh, fermentation installation. Uh, that's two fermenters of 15,000 liters and two fermenters of 1,500 liters. 
Um, just to show you that um, our, our core technology is biotechnology, fermentation. And we do this at quite a large scale. So it's a pilot plant, but we really work up to a 10 cubic meter scale. Um, so what we want to do in the, in the pilot plant is to help companies to bridge the gap in the innovation chain, um, which typically is situated between an invention of a new bio-based product, say a biosurfactant, and the full-scale industrial deployment of this new product. So in between is what you have, um, is what people call the valley of death. So it doesn't cost a lot to discover a new microorganism or, or, or a new product uh, from a bio-based feedstock, um, but it does, does cost a lot to build a full-scale plant. Um, so what you don't want to do is to jump from the lab straight into this industrial production because then you will be sure that things will go wrong, that you bought the wrong machines, um, that your, the market is not ready um, and that your investors are not convinced and that you will not be able to gather the money altogether. So what we do um, in the Bioways Europe pilot plant as a shared service facility uh, we have all our equipment and all, also the experien experienced personnel um, to translate this lab-based protocol to an industrial protocol. So all the machines we have are um, industrial machines, be it in, a, in quite a small form, that you can buy off the shelf. So if we can run the process in her plant, you're sure that you can build a large-scale facility. Um, that's one objective. A second objective is to produce the first hundreds of kilograms and tons of these, these new products because you cannot convince a customer with a publication. You have to bring in a ton or a bag of this new product so they can test the applications um, and they can really put it into their plants and see if it really works, if they can make nice formulations. Um, and thirdly, we deliver at the end of all these trials, all these scale-up trials we performed for them, um, a final report with all the technical data, all the um, uh, results of the trials we did, so that they don't have to um, run into the same issues again, uh, because you're sure to encounter issues during scale-up. Um, so it's very important to describe them. Um, Okay, so what is our business model? Um, we're a service provider. Um, we have two types of um, projects. Uh, first of all, the bilateral projects for companies, uh, companies all around the world. They can come to us and say, we want you to scale up this new product and they just pay us for it. Um, that's very confidential because it's innovative. Uh, it's of strategic importance to these companies. So we can never disclose the names unless they do so. So I have a couple of examples, uh, luckily. But most of the over 120 or even over 200 companies that we served um, cannot be mentioned. Um, but luckily, we also have um, another type of projects, and that's consortium projects that are partially funded by Europe via uh, Horizon 2020, bio-based uh, industries joint undertaking, um, etc. Um, and because they are partly subsidized, they're also partly public. So you have to mention or uh, which partners you collaborate with, which products you make. Um, so that gives us um, uh, very good visibility because we're currently scale-up partner in 24 uh, European projects. That's really a lot. Um, and if you know that each project has approximately 10 partners, um, you can see that we have quite a large network across the value chain. Um, okay. So in our pilot plant, um, we, we uh, were actually a one-stop shop, meaning that um, we can start from biomass uh, and produce a final refined bulk business-to-business -business product for our customers. Um, so uh, we pre-treat this biomass. Um, we make it accessible for further conversions uh, 
via biocatalytic uh, conversions, fermentation or green chemistry. So this is the biotechnology I was talking about. Um, and then we have a very large array of equipment to purify this product afterwards. <clears throat> um, okay, some examples of biomass feedstocks and final products we, we uh, process and make uh, are um, corn stover. That's an example of a second generation feedstock. So corn stover um, contains a lot of cellulose. Um, uh, which you can convert into fermentable sugars uh, and if you can feed it to a microorganism you can modify this microorganism to make no matter what uh, almost uh, which is in this list then um, we can use paper pulp oils and fats husk bran straw materials um, byproducts from food industry or agro industry algae non-food crops like wood miscanthus um, then there's the syngas example I gave before. So mixtures of CO2, CO and hydrogen, which we can also feed to microorganisms, which then convert them to chemicals. So that's what we call gas fermentation. Um, and then we also sometimes use first generation feedstocks like glucose, sucrose, uh, etc. So the final products we make from that are uh, biochemicals, bio-based building blocks, for example, organic acids, from which you can make bioplastics. Uh, industrial enzymes, so biocatalysts, um, solvents, proteins, flavors and fragrances, uh, biopesticides and biostimulants, biosurfactants, so soap made by yeast strains, for example, uh, nutraceuticals, fuels, specialty carbohydrates, etc. Um, so the possibilities are almost endless um, with biotechnology. This is our facility. Um, maybe you can see from this picture and ex especially from these gates that this used to be a fire station. Um, so these firemen, they had a garage, but they also had a swimming pool and a sports hall. Um, so nice spacious halls for us to do a lot of piloting. Uh, but still that wasn't enough space, so we added um, a fourth hall here. Um, so just some pictures of the halls inside, so you can see our nice equipment. Um, in, in the red hall, for example, uh, we, had a, we have several tanks, uh, we have a lot of skids, so very modular unit operations that we can couple one to the other in a Lego type principle. You can just build a factory. Uh, every week it's a different process line because every time we make a different product for a different customer. Um, here you see our fermenters uh, in the former swimming pool. Uh, in the former sports hall, we have an ATEX zone, so chemical reactors that are explosion proof um, to be operated with organic solvents which are flammable. Um, we can evaporate water, we can spray dry materials, we can, uh, in, in our fourth hall, we actually have our largest uh, equipment uh, to purify uh, and make food products. Um, and of course, we have a lab. Uh, in which we do the tech transfer, so our customers bring their protocol um, and we have to repeat that at a small scale uh, to make sure we, can, we get the same results before we start scaling up. Um, and then I selected for project examples um, of projects that have some link with Ghent um, because we have many projects um, and not all of them are linked to Ghent, um, but in this case um, I think it's important to mention, for example, 3F Bio is a UK-based company. Um, they developed a process to produce a mycoprotein, um, uh, which we scaled up to our 15 cubic meter um, bioreactors. Um, and after this successful scale-up, so they use this mycoprotein as a meat replacer. Um, so you can use a very low low value or very cheap sugar source to convert it into a high value protein, uh, which is a food product, of course. Um, and they have received, after the scale up, um, a European flag flagship grant to build a larger scale plant of 16,000 tons per year 
um, which they will construct at the site of Alco Biofuel, um, the company that produces bioethanol right next to us. Um, Provivi um, is an American company that uh, developed um, biopheromones, so actually a bio biological pest control um, system or molecules um, to uh, fight against fall army worm, which is a very destructive um, insect uh, for corn production. Um, so we scaled up this bio uh, pest control uh, molecule for them um, and produced several hundreds of kilograms. Um, they um, constructed a legal entity in Flanders um, because of this partnership and collaboration. Um, a nice anecdote of this company is that one of the founders is Frances Arnold. Um, she won the Nobel Prize of Chemistry in 2018 um, for her activities in directed evolution, so improvement of biocatalysts. Uh, then there's our collaboration with ArcelorMittal, uh, who has, a, of course, a very big production site in the uh, North Sea ports in Ghent. Um, we've been collaborating with them um, since 2012 to convert their blast furnace of gases via gas fermentation into chemicals. Um, then they've applied for a um, European budget uh, and they, have, they will have an investment of 150 million euro, um, which is ongoing at the moment, to construct an ethanol plant from Syngas in, uh, in the North Sea port in Ghent. Uh, which they hope to commission next year. Um, the last example is InBios. Um, that's a spin-off company from the University of Ghent. Um, they have a technology um, to produce human milk oligosaccharides, so sugars um, that only appear in uh, mother's milk, so not in cow milk, very special and high-value sugars. Um, for example, two fucus electos, but there are many others. Um, and we've scaled up um, the production of several of those sugars for them um, and demonstrated this technology and produced regulatory and market samples for them. Um, and they've partnered with DuPont, uh, which is, of course, a very large company, uh, for their first product. Now, this is a picture of our team. Uh, you've seen our equipment, uh, you've seen our uh, custom, some of our customers, um, but actually our team is the most important asset of the entire pilot plant. They have all the knowledge and they have all the flexibility. They collaborate with our customers every day. Uh, many of them uh, are engineers from the University of Ghent, um, so indeed it's very important for us to be near uh, a city and to be near um, this very ri rich environment um, of, of people and partners um, and also public partners. Yeah, thanks. Thank you.